Six o'clock, she says she blew the whistle about wrongdoing at the Department of Children and Family Services. And that left her out of a job. The investigative unit, Chris Nakamoto, talking to her about her concerns and what DCFS has to say about her claims. Sylvia Michael, Dr. Monica Farr was a child welfare specialist. She started at DCFS this summer in hopes of helping children. But tonight, she says after witnessing problem after problem, she could no longer stay silent. When she put everything into an email, she was told her services were no longer needed. Refused to be silenced. And so that's what I say to DCFS. I refuse to be silent. Dr. Monica Farb is used to standing up for the little guy. For years, she's been a force to be reckoned with. It wasn't the judge. It was CPS that did not do the correct investigation. The president of the NAACP in Poincapie Parish. She's responsible for getting a law changed about school choice as she remains passionate about making the community better. It's why she says she accepted a job this summer at DCFS. In that short time, she says she witnessed nightmare after nightmare. I'm also putting all of this in facts. And when she put what she witnessed to paper, she was let go. Children are dying. Children are dying. A, an infant was just sent home last week or the week before that was still shaking from the fentanyl in this baby's body. And that baby was sent back into the home of that parent who was responsible for that child getting hold of fentanyl. A shocking claim by Farb, who worked at the DCFS office off of South Arden Wood in Baton Rouge. Shocking because DCFS recently had children die in their care who were exposed to fentanyl. Last year, Marquita Walters, the head of the agency, resigned after months of scrutiny over a series of missteps at the agency. Last summer, two-year-old Mitchell Robinson overdosed on fentanyl. DCFS failed to act despite three separate complaints. <laughs> Then months later, one-year-old Jari Paul died of a fentanyl overdose on Halloween. That controversy led to a complete change at the top of DCFS. Do you have confidence in Marquita Walters? Yes, yeah, as, soon, as soon as I have more on that, I'll tell you. Marquita Walters was out after Governor John Bell Edwards could not tell WBRZ that he still had confidence in her leadership. So just because you change the guard, if you don't change your intent, you're not doing anything. WBRZ asked about that specific case after Farb provided the name of the child and what was DCFS's reasoning, putting another child exposed to fentanyl back into the home where the exposure happened. You all sent this baby back into the home where the mother exposed this baby to fentanyl. And the response was, well, we don't get our weight all of the time. Now that baby is back in the home with the mother that's an active drug user. Tonight, Farb says DCFS terminated her, saying she was still on probation, and they were executing their window to part ways with her. It's happening, as she says, there's a backlog of 150 cases. I would like to say to them, stop lying to the public. You don't want to change. You changed the guard then because you were caught. We reached out to DCFS about Dr. Farb's claims. A spokeswoman said they received our questions and the allegations will be taken seriously and will immediately look into and address the concerns. The agency said state law prohibits the release of confidential information and talking about specific cases. First at 6 o'clock, a state lawmaker is getting involved after a whistleblower at the Department of Children and Family Services says... She was fired for alerting bosses about problems. Among her allegations, a blind eye turned to children exposed to dangerous situations. The investigative unit, Chris Nakamoto, here with details on the fallout. State Representative C. Denise Marcel says the allegations made by a child welfare specialist cannot be ignored. Tonight, she is asking for the secretary of the agency to respond, as she also is trying to get a committee to meet on the issue. Well, I did reach out to the secretary. State Representative C. Denise Marcel is alarmed at allegations made this week by a Department of Children and Family Services employee. I blew the whistle on the fact that... A whistleblower who says she was fired for raising concerns to supervisors about what was happening. I'm concerned about all of her allegations, uh, but mostly about the children with the fentanyl and the cases and the mismanagement of those cases. 
On Monday, the WBRZ investigative unit exposed Dr. Monica Farb's story. Farb, a child welfare specialist, worked out of the South Ardenwood office in Baton Rouge and says she witnessed things that were unsettling. Children are dying. Children are dying. A, an infant was just sent home last week or the week before that was still shaking from the fentanyl in this baby's body. And that baby was sent back into the home of that parent who was responsible for that child getting hold of fentanyl. Farb says after bringing concerns to higher ups, she was told her services were no longer needed. I wasn't asking any questions, Chris. I was exposing what I saw and I was advising them what I would not do. I was advised that I had to transport children in my personal vehicle, which is completely against DCFS policy. Farb's claims are shocking because DCFS recently had children die in their care who were exposed to fentanyl. Last year, Marquita Walters resigned after months of scrutiny over a series of missteps at the agency. Last summer, two-year-old Mitchell Robinson overdosed on fentanyl. DCFS failed to act despite three separate complaints. Then months later, one-year-old Jari Paul died of a fentanyl overdose on Halloween. That controversy led to a complete change at the top of DCFS. Marquita Walters was out after Governor John Bell Edwards could not tell WBRZ that he still had confidence in her leadership. So just because you change the guard, if you don't change your intent, you're not doing anything. I certainly think that the oversight committee uh, needs to take a look at uh, those allegations. Tonight, Marcel says it's incumbent upon them to make sure children who are being looked after by the state are safe. As not just lawmakers, but as citizens, we ought to want what's best for our children. And when we have children that are in these situations, particularly when there's fentanyl involved, I think that is an atrocity to uh, just return them to their parents if that has happened. If that's true, that is very problematic for me because we, we're putting children back in unsafe environments if that's the case. Uh, I would love to know what actually happened and that's why I, I said I'm calling for an investigation. I'm letting Ms. Ricks know that. DCFS told us this week that it takes all allegations like this seriously and would be investigating the claims. A spokesperson said that they cannot comment on specific cases.